In this video, we'll be looking at another two very important nonlinear functions, in particular the exponential and logarithmic functions. So far, we've generally been talking about functions where the variable x is somehow something like a polynomial or inside a sine or cosine or trigonometric function. With exponential functions, the function takes the form such that x appears in the index on the right hand side. So we have something of the form y equals a constant raised to the power of that variable. Now in particular, we're going to restrict ourselves to talking about positive values of a and also where a is not equal to one because a equal to one would just be a constant, which is fairly boring in terms of an exponential function. Now some common examples that you'll come across, y equal to two to the x, y equals e to the x, and y equals 10 to the x. And these pop up in various different areas and applications. Two to the x coming up often in computer-based applications, e to the x and 10x used more so in science and engineering. Now, if you're not sure or not familiar with what e is, remember that e is just the number, which just goes on forever. It's a, it's a uh, irrational number, 2.71 approximately, and it just goes on and on forever. Now, it's a really neat number, as we'll find later when we do some calculus, because the function e to the x is the only function which differentiates and integrates to give itself. The graphs of exponential functions, y equals a to the x functions, all have a very similar shape. They just change in terms of how steeply or shallowly they rise, depending on what that value of a is. So some plots are shown in this picture to the left for different values of a. We can see that y equals two to the x is here with the solid line and y equals e to the x, approximately 2.71 to the x, is given by the dotted line, or the dashed line. So as a gets bigger and bigger, the steepness of the exponential curve rises. For lower values of a, we have a less shallow exponential rise. You may have heard of things growing exponentially, and this is where that name comes from. Now what you'll notice, except for my little rough sketching here, is that all of these graphs go through the point x equals zero, and function value equal to one. And that's a common characteristic of the exponential function. Now all of these curves shown are for when a is greater than one. And they all represent growth from left to right, exponential growth. On the next slide, we've got a couple of graphs for exponential functions where a is less than one. And these functions represent exponential decay or negative exponential functions. So you can see that moving from left to right, those curves are decreasing towards zero. Another thing to note is that none of these exponential curves cross the axis. They asymptote toward it, but they never cross it. Now, when we're talking about a less than one exponential functions, we can actually use index laws and think of these as a greater than one, but with negative exponents. And we can rewrite those to give us things like relationships that show us that y equals one on three to the x is the same as y equal to three to the minus x. They're just interchangeable representations. Again though, all of these curves pass through that x equals zero, y equals one point. And as I just mentioned, they'll never become zero and they'll never quite reach zero. They only asymptote toward it. So that's the exponential functions. And you'll see these arising quite often in later subjects and in other engineering and science studies. Let's have a look at logarithms now. A logarithm is just a different way of writing an exponential. The logarithm function and the exponential functions are examples of a pair of inverse functions. So remember those are functions that can undo each other's actions on an input variable. So if we had y equals e to the x and we we're trying to solve for x, we could just take the log of both sides to base e and we'd find that x is equal to log of y. That's pretty much the definition that we've got here down in the bottom box. Given y equals a to the x, we can define x to be the logarithm of y to that base a. And we write it x equal to log base a of y. Both these mean the same thing and we can use them interchangeably. So that's the logarithm. Let's have a look at this example now. Pause the video and see if you can do the first example which talks about writing the equation y equals 3 to the x instead of being in exponential form write it in logarithmic form and then move on through the next couple as well so if we have y equal to 3 to the x we can see that the base here is 3 
using our definition from the previous page, we're going to write that x is equal to log base 3 of y. So we have y equal to 3 to the x, equivalent to x equals log base 3 of y. Both mean the same thing. Now in part b, we're asked to express, express log base 3 of 9 equal to 2 in exponential form. This is essentially the reverse action. So log base 3 of 9 equal to 2. We're going to use the base of 3. Raise that to the power on the right hand side. And that's equal to the number that we took the log of in the first place. Now of course that's fairly obvious to us that 3 squared is equal to 9. That's something we already know. Finally, we're going to use our new knowledge of this definition of a logarithm to solve this logarithmic equation. Log base 5 of x equal to 3 for x. So using the inverse property of the exponential and logarithmic function, we can take the base 5 and raise it to the left hand side and do the same on the right. The base 5 raised to the 3. So you can see we're just doing the same thing to, the both, to both sides here. With the inverse property, 5 to the log base 5 of x will just undo each other and leave us with x. And that'll be equal to 5 to the 3, or 5 by 5 by 5 again, which is 125. And that's the answer to our logarithmic equation. So these two statements are equivalent. Now maybe you've seen before, hopefully in previous studies, what are known as the log laws. These are just restatements using the log definition of the index laws. We've got the log of a product is the sum of the logs, the log of a quotient is the difference of logs, and so on down this set of rules. And we can use these to help us simplify and rearrange expressions and solve equations. If you're not familiar with these, it's probably a good idea to go and check out a reference text and try some examples that'll help you get familiar with them. But for now, here's one example that can show us a lot of these rules all used at once. We're going to write this following expression, instead of as a sum of logarithms, as a single logarithm. The first thing to notice is that we've got a bunch of logs with the same base, 4. We've got them added, we've got them subtracted, and we've also got one that's multiplied by a constant. We're going to combine the rules that refer to the sum of logs, the difference of logs, and this one here which talks about a constant multiple of a log, to rewrite these all as one. So the first thing I'm going to do is change this middle term, where we've got 2 times log base 4 of y. I'm going to bring that 2 inside using the third rule here. The log of a power is the power times the log. So I can rewrite as log base 4 of x plus log base 4 of y squared, take away log base 4 of z. Next, I'm going to add together the first two but I'm going to use a top rule here that says the log of a product is the sum of the logs. So I can change that into a product. We'll have log base 4 of x times y squared. Take away log base 4 of z. Finally, I can combine those because the difference of logs is the log of a quotient. So we end up with just a single log base 4 xy squared all over z. And that's the answer to our problem. So that one's just an expression. Let's have a look at solving an equation using the log laws. Here we're asked to solve this given equation for the variable y. So we're going to use the log laws to get rid of things and simplify. First thing I'm going to do is work just with the right hand side. I'm going to try to write this as a single log using log rules and then I'll try to get rid of the logs on both sides using the uh, properties of the inverse function. So first of all, we're going to combine these. Log base 10 of 5 times x squared. So there you can see I've brought the 2 inside and then combined the 5x squared. Now I can see I've got two sides of an equation with log base 10s. So I'm going to use the inverse function 10 to the power of log base 10 of y and 10 to the power of log base 10 of 5x squared. The inverse functions, 10 and log base 10, will knock each other out. And we're just going to be left with 5x squared equal to y. 
and that's our solution there for y. We have y isolated equal to 5x squared. Okay, so that's a little bit about logarithmic functions and exponential functions and the curves of the exponential functions. Before you move on, try out the worksheet problems for this video and write down in your notebook anything you think you'll need to ask someone questions about or figure out later.